And we are live. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel. Before we get going today, please make sure to like the video, comment your prediction for this fight down below, and if you are new, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Today, I'm going to be doing my Punch Perfect prediction for Kazuta Ioka defending his WBO Super Flyweight World Championship against uh, an old foe in Donny Nietes. This rematch will be taking place on Wednesday. It'll be difficult to catch over here in the UK, but if you join the Discord or if you stay up to date with me on Twitter, I'm sure you'll be able to, to find a link from me on Wednesday. So really looking forward to this fight. Obviously, it's been a long time coming. Uh, Nietes has retired and unretired in the time that it's taken since their, their first fight in uh, New Year's Eve in 2018. So yeah, it's been a long time coming. Ioka's been on a fantastic run, although there are some signs that perhaps he's slowing down Nietes hasn't exactly set the world alight since returning, so both of them are at a very different stage from when they first fought. I think the best way to start this video is kind of talking about both guys and then we'll get into their first fight as a recap and then I'll go into my prediction and sort of how I see this one playing out. So yeah, to talk about both guys just quickly, two guys that I really respect and admire, two guys that I feel are both Hall of Fame worthy, I'd say Ioka slightly more. Um, you look at Ioka's career, a full weight world champion, was the first Japanese fighter to, to accomplish that. He actually stopped Kosi Tanaka becoming the fastest to do it when he defeated him. So he's written his name into history. He's been a part of the pound for pound top 10 at, at various stages as well. So he's got a, an incredible resume. Look at some of the victories on there. Felix Alvarado, uh, Aston Polizze, um, Williams Arroyo, Javier Cintron. And even when you look at some, you know, the defeat, I didn't even mention Kosi, Kosi Tanaka, but even look at some of the defeats, He's got two defeats on the resume against uh, Amnat Rowanrong and also Donny Nietes, obviously. And you could argue won both of those fights and so maybe should be unbeaten as well. So he's got an incredible resume, a Hall of Famer for me, a legend of the sport. Not just saying that because I love Japanese boxing. But you guys know I love my uh, my Filipino fighting as well. And Donny Nietes for me is the biggest kind of Filipino legend of the modern era outside of Manny and, and Onito Donaire. You know, he's the guy that hasn't quite got the shine that those two have got on HBO and and you know just being you know Manny Pacquiao being the biggest name in 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 Philippines boxing of all time but he's ultimately a legend in his own right had a lot of close calls with some split decisions some draws some majority decisions and stuff but ultimately look at his resume as well you got Fuentes on there you got Sosa on there you got Rodriguez on there and you got Ioka on there so he's got some fantastic wins as well a four weight world champion um you know, both guys getting on a bit now. Ioka is 33 years old. Uh, Nietes is 40 years old. In terms of punch power, both of them are sort of similar. Ioka coming in at the 50% mark. Uh, Nietes slightly lower at 46. So I say Ioka is just a bit bigger and a bit more of a power puncher. But it's going to be interesting to see, you know, kind of what form they're in, given the age and stuff that I just mentioned. Returning to their first fight... We'll talk about that quickly and how I saw it, because it's a very contentious fight. People saw it either way. I think more people side with Ioka, just from the boxing fans I speak to. Um, I can only base it off that. And more people thought Ioka nicked it. Um, I've actually seen kind of 116, 112 for Ioka quite a lot as well. For me, watching that fight back, and I, I remember it clear as day because it was uh, 2018 New Year's Eve. It was in Macau. And usually my favourite... Uh, sort of festive tradition is on New Year's Eve, you'll always get a fantastic card over in Japan. This one was in Macau, but what a card it was. You had uh, Maruti Methalani, a great flyweight champion, was devastating uh, in, in that sort of, uh, on that morning over here in the UK. Then you had uh, Hiroto Gaiguchi really arriving at the elite stage when he defeated Heki Budler and put a real beating on him, which has aged really well when we've seen uh, Budler's recent exploits against, um, against, uh, uh, Elwin Soto and then obviously at the top of the card we got treated to an absolute war between Ioka and Nietes again two great so that was a fantastic card I still remember it clear as day I, I love that card um, the way I saw it is the early portion of the fight ultimately should determine how you scored it now don't get me wrong it was close throughout but I actually felt once Nietes settled into it he dictated the middle stages. He ate up uh, Ioka on the inside. He was far more efficient on the inside, landing the much cleaner work. I, uh, Nietes is tremendous in the pocket. Such poise, such great shot selection, uh, so fluid when he lets his hands go. And he just almost, when he's on the inside, it's like the fight slows down for him. And he's able to pick his punches and see opportunities and see spots that he can expose. 
whereas Oka doesn't do that on the inside. But down the stretch, Nietes's age and his lack of physicality started to show, and Ioka started to stick him on it a little bit more and started to wear him down, and Ioka finished really strong down the stretch. So it's the early portion of the fight that ultimately probably determines how you score it, and it was really close. Neither guy really kind of um, imprinted their game plan on the fight, yet, as I mentioned... You kind of saw Nietes really imprint his in the in the middle stage and Ioka down the stretch. But early on, it was just very tit for tat. And neither guy, although it was very back and forth, was able to really be on top. But I edged it more to Ioka. I felt the kind of outside fighting suited him a little bit more early on. And Nietes kind of needed to find his range, find his flow, and find his way onto the inside and find a comfortable pocket to throw from. So I've always sort of lent a little bit more towards Ioka, but I can see a 7-5 case for Nietzsche. He did land the better work on the inside, and his inside work is tremendous. Kind of, There's parts of, of his inside game that reminds me of Chocolatito, but almost like a, a light version, like a B-Tech version. That's not an insult because he's still a great fighter, but there are parts that remind me. So obviously, as I mentioned, very contentious, but one that I don't complain about too much. Since then, what's happened? You know, that was for the WBO uh, Super Flyweight Championship. That was the fight that was would crown either man a full weight world champion. Obviously, Ioka was look, looking to create history, whereas that history had obviously been created before with Manny and, and uh, Nonito. But, you know, Donny Needs has wanted to join those two, so he was trying to create a bit of history himself. But, you know, Donny Needs came out on top that night, but then decided to vacate straight afterwards. That's when Ioka stepped in and won the vacant belt against Aston Polizze, also another Filipino, and uh, you know was brilliant that night. And he created a bit of history for Japanese boxing, imprinted his name into the history books forever, and just went on a really nice run after that. That three-fight run of Polizze, and then he went on to beat Javier Cintron, who, again, fantastic amateur, fought at two Olympic Games, brilliant Puerto Rican fighter. That win really gets sort of overlooked, in my opinion, great win. And then moving into the biggest win of his career, the best performance of his career against his fellow countryman, the unbeaten Kosi Tanaka, who is looking to become the fastest full weight world champion in history, looking to obviously become the fastest Japanese fighter to do it as well, which probably would have taken away the shine from Ioka's achievement of becoming the only full weight world champion. Tanaka, if he'd have won, would have done it as well, but done it quicker. So it probably would have overshadowed. But Ioka was sensational that night. He outboxed Tanaka, exposed all of the, the holes in his defence, landed the bigger shots, countered him beautifully, led off behind that beautiful cultured jab, and then led him in, counted him beautifully, and got him out of there, got the stoppage. And that performance was so good, it kind of felt like you needed that, that icing on the cake, the sort of exclamation point on the statement, and he delivered that. It was a tremendous performance. But you do have to say since then, perhaps Ioka's peaked. Perhaps that was that was it for Ioka. That was the top of the mountain. And he was able to get himself so motivated for the fight because of all the things I mentioned. A sort of domestic rivalry. The piece of history that would have been sort of surpassed if Tanaka had won. Just bragging rights on the line and all that sort of thing. But ultimately, since then, Ioka just hasn't performed to that level. So could it be a case of 33 years old after fighting at four weight classes, being involved at the top level for many years now? He's just fading a little bit and he's not quite the fighter he was and our expectations are too high. Is it because, you know, he got his level so high to achieve that piece of history against Polizze, he was then in a tough fight against Cintron and, a, you know, a meaningful fight against Tanaka? Has his two fights last year just not been meaningful enough to get him motivated? And those two fights I'm referring to against Francisco Rodriguez firstly and then Ryuchi uh, Fukunaga afterwards. Now, the Francisco Rodriguez one is the fight that sticks out more for me because I thought he lost. Over in Japan, I think if it had been anywhere else in the world, you probably would have seen Ioka upset that night and dethroned. Because Rodriguez just ate him up on the inside, was more physically dominant and just put an uncomfortable pace on Ioka. And whilst Ioka would perhaps control larger portions of the round, it would be his opponent, Rodriguez, that would outshine him in the final 10 seconds and hurt Ioka and just catch more more eye of those people scoring apart from the, the judges that were over there. So I thought, okay, he's got away with one there. Not many people saw the fight, so it, it wasn't like a, a catchall Taylor robbery where there's police involved and there's, there's everything being thrown up on Twitter and, and calls for a rematch. He then moved on to defend against his fellow countryman, Ryochi Fukunaga. 
Again, a guy that is just not on the level of any of the world-class fighters at super flyweight. And Ioka went the distance. He didn't look great. It was a competitive fight when really if it did go the distance, he should be dominating winning every round and he didn't. Just last year, whether it was the level of opposition or what, he just didn't seem to look like the old Ioka. And he seemed to be too willing to get involved in a tear-up rather than being the classy back foot outside fighter that he is. When Ioka fights on the outside, he's one of the best fighters in the sport. Easily, hands down. But when he mixes it up on the inside, he just can't do it to a high standard. He gets he would get eaten up by a chocolatito. He kind of got eaten up by Rodriguez. He got eaten up by Nietes in parts as well. He has to be careful with that. And I don't know whether it's just because he, he traded up too much in those fights or whether he's lost a step, but... He really needs to get back, you know, being behind that jab and doing what he did in the Tanaka performance, which was disciplined. Don't get involved with the guy that can brawl and, and sort of bang it. Make sure that you keep things safe and you keep things tidy. That's what we need to see from Ioka. So I'm interested to see this weekend whether we see a faded version that's going to be slowly on the decline from now on. Or are we going to see a revitalised version of Ioka who just got things wrong and knows this time round he needs to be more switched on against Nietzsche regardless of age or whatever. So we'll move on to Nietzsche before I get into my prediction now to see the fight playing out. As I mentioned, Nietzsche retired, disappeared after that fight, came back in um, in 2021, I think it was, on the uh, Frampton versus Herring undercard. He signed with MTK and then later Pro Bellum. Came back on that card and got a victory. Hardly set the world alight. Early on, he kind of looked like his former self, but just seemed to fade out as he has done in recent years. And then earlier this year, came away with a split decision draw. I kind of felt he'd done enough and early on he looked like his former self again but as the fight went on it just aged horribly and he just didn't look like he has the spring in his step anymore. So he's not exactly coming in this fight fresh or, or loaded with confidence or even on a good run or having any momentum. Ioka, despite his, his flaws over the past year, will be the one coming into this with way more momentum after everything that's happened since these two met in 2018. So how do I see this fight playing out? Um, I do think Kazuto Ioka wins. Because ultimately, I think Nietes has faded more than he has since the first fight. And as I mentioned, I thought Ioka won. The fight is in Japan this time, so I think anything close will go in favour of Ioka. Um, for me, Ioka should absolutely be looking to stop Nietes. Nietes has got a fantastic chin, so has Ioka. But in the last fight, he really got to Nietes down the stretch. And I feel like this time, now that he's aged, now that he just clearly can't keep up late on... Ioka should be looking to pile the pressure on after dominating early from the back foot. Outmatch him physically. As I mentioned, slightly harder puncher, slightly bigger, slightly more physical. He needs to put the pressure on down the stretch and try and pursue the stoppage, in my opinion. But as I mentioned, Nietes is so crafty, so wily, and has just got such a clever inside game. So much poise. He never gets flustered. I do think he'll, he'll find ways to sort of navigate around that and sort of protect himself. But if Father Time really has caught up with him, there'll be nothing he can do. So how do I see it playing out? I think uh, Kazuto Ioka will box off the back foot a little bit more this time. Use that jab, top five jab in boxing, Kazuto Ioka. So cultured, whether it be a weapon that he sticks out there to knock your head back, whether it be just a range finder, whether it be just a, an occupier that he kind of sticks out there to keep you guessing and struggling to sort of find your rhythm or be able to even see you clearly. He's just got such a good lead hand and his jab is tremendous, so he needs to utilise that. Utilise his feet, he's got great movement, Ioka, great lateral movement when he wants to use it. We need to see the Ioka we saw against Tanaka and hopefully I think we will. So we'll see a bit more movement from him and we'll see him put on a decent display. And then as the fight progresses, Nietes just doesn't quite have the spring in his step anymore. Quite the same explosion to be able to get his shots off on the inside. I feel like Ioka will be gone before he can. I feel like Ioka does make mistakes and allow his opponents in. So Nietes will have some rounds in the middle again where he comes into it. But I just think Ioka will win down the stretch and be far more dominant. I really want him to go for the stoppage, but I just... I can't always trust the consistency of his performances and Nietes is very durable. So I'm going to say Oka wins fairly clearly on points, but Nietes has his moments, but ultimately just isn't young enough anymore to keep up with these boys. So yeah, we're going for Kazuto Oka to win with no doubt this time. The card itself, uh, you're going to see a man by the name of Hayate Tatsumi, who I am so high on. I think he's going to be a multi-weight world champion. Keep your eye out for him. I think he's brilliant. And if Ioka wins this fight, he's talked about Estrada, but I think Nakatani will be the name next. Tanaka wants to fight him again and get revenge, but Nakatani seems to be gunning for that fight, so I think you'll see that at the end of the year.
I really do. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. If you're a Pinoy fight fan, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you're a Japanese fight fan, you know you guys know that I love Japanese boxing. So make sure to subscribe as well, and I'll catch you next time.